To see the first close-up images of a world never before known, this moment is one of the greatest joys in the life of a planetary scientist. We're moving this. In the early morning hours of July 9, 1979, on the real-time television monitors at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we began to learn about a world called Europa. These are the modern explorers, men and women trained in astronomy, physics, geology, or engineering. Many of them have devoted five to eight years to this single mission. Cassin's model for Europa says that you, if you started off with it liquid, you could probably pump in enough energy to keep it liquid. Let's see. So the appeal, the, the Cassin thing said that in order for there to be enough heating going on, you sort of had to start the heating before Europa basically uh, cooled then, off. Uh, very low. Yeah, but gee, what about the relief from the cracks? Shouldn't the sure? cracks and yield and flow also? They gotta be, sure, they gotta they be, be renewed. renewed. The Io and Europa, there's a twin, a pair there, and then there's a pair out of Ganymede's sure. cluster. You can't look at the surface of a world so different from ours without wondering how both were made. Just rotate it out a little bit. Right. You see, you see the, the yeah. Voyager presented us with six new worlds in the Jupiter system alone. Maybe. <laughs> the more you learn about other worlds, the better you understand our own. We speculate, criticize, argue, calculate, reflect, and wonder. We return again and again to the astonishing data. And slowly, we begin to understand. The Dutch sailing ships brought back rare and valuable commodities from the new worlds they visited. Our Voyager spaceships return rare and valuable information to computerized wharves on this shore of the Sea of Space. Here the data are unloaded to be stored, enhanced, processed, and treasured. Maps of alien lands will be generated from this information. In this electronic warehouse are tens of thousands of images of previously unknown worlds. How does a picture from the outer solar system get to us? Sunlight shines on Europa and is reflected back to space, where some of it strikes the phosphors of the Voyager television cameras, generating an image. The image is radioed back across the immense intervening distance of half a billion kilometers to a radio telescope on Earth, one in Australia, say. The telescope then passes the information via communication satellite in Earth orbit to Southern California. There, it's transmitted by a set of microwave relay towers to a computer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And there, it is processed. The picture is fundamentally like a newspaper wire photo made of perhaps a million individual dots of differing shades of gray so fine and close together that at a distance the constituent dots are invisible. We see only their cumulative effect. The information from the spacecraft specifies how bright or dark each dot is to be. After processing, the dots are then stored on a magnetic disk, something like a phonograph record. By this day, there were already 11,000 pictures from Voyager 2 in our electronic library. Finally, the end product of this remarkable set of links and relays is a hard copy which comes out of this machine showing, in this case, the wonders of Europa which were recorded for the first time in human history today it is absolutely astonishing. See, Voyager 1 got very good pictures of the other three big moons, Galilean satellites of Jupiter, but not of Europa. It was left to Voyager 2 today to get the first close-up pictures of Europa where we see things that are only a few kilometers across. And at first glance, it looks like nothing so much as the canal network of Mars that Percival Lowell imagined to exist on that planet. We see an amazing, intricate network of crisscrossing straight and curved lines. Are these straight lines ridges? Are they troughs? Is it connected with plate tectonics on the Earth? How does it illuminate the other satellites of the Jovian system? At this moment, the vaunted technology has produced something astonishing, but it remains for 
the limitations and cleverness of another device, the human brain, to figure it out.